All right. So I do have some slides. I promise there is some code in this. Uh, just going to get this guy going. So my name's Alan Ritchie. Uh, I'm a former uh, Xamarin MVP when that was a thing. I'm a Microsoft MVP now. Uh, I've been doing .NET since it basically started, which was like 2000, 2001, somewhere in there. Um, I've done lots of open source for Xamarin over the years. Um, you may have used ACR user dialogues, uh, some of my Bluetooth stuff, geofencing, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I've been at this for a while. Um, it's been fun. So today we're gonna talk about Shiny. Uh, we're gonna talk about what it is, uh, what it solves for you, uh, kind of some of the general architecture um, around how Shiny uh, solves things a little bit differently than you might be used to using plugins. Um, and Shiny is quite a big package uh, or offering. So we're not gonna talk about all of the libraries it has today, but I'll certainly uh, speak about some of the stuff that is available uh, should you choose to start using it. Um, today, we'll, the, the code example, probably just show a job uh, and some basic wiring, how it could make your life easier. Um, and then at the end, I don't know if we're doing q and I heard Q&A. Uh, Gerald could probably set that up after. Uh, so if you've got any questions, probably save them till the end. Uh, so what is Shiny? Um, it's a cross-platform foundation to build your background and device-centric services. So if you're, you're doing stuff like Bluetooth or push notifications, um, stuff where Xamarin Forms obviously doesn't tend to trend or, or any of the MVVM libraries, this is the stuff that's gonna happen in the background. Um, it provides a way to write modular and testable code, um, which is very difficult if you've got something like plugins. Um, usually they've got statics and, and, and stuff that make it very difficult. Um, Shiny does bring a lot of the needed uh, infrastructure that you need for your background services. Uh, stuff like logging and storage uh, and dependency injection come out like come out of the box um, because you need uh, a lot of like your database connection and your HTTP APIs. Uh, you'll need them in your background services. And again, you don't have something like Forms or or, or even uh, Prism back there to help you out. So Shiny does a lot of this upfront work for you. Um, so it is basically Prism for for services uh, for those who are familiar with Prism. Uh, Shiny is designed for Android, iOS, and UWP. Um, the goal was to make it one consistent API uh, that you could work with and not have to worry so much about um, the platform uh, implementations behind them. Uh, obviously, as Xamarin developers, you know we want to write our code once and have it work everywhere. Um, there's still some boilerplate that takes place, but I'll show you some of the cool things uh, that we're doing to kind of help out with that and kind of lends to what Maui's gonna be doing uh, later um, with a lot of the code gen stuff. So what does Shiny solve? Um, again, like I saw every apps, a lot, a lot of the these business apps use features like GPS and geofencing and they all suffered kind of the same thing. They couldn't get stuff working in the background. They couldn't get their services that they needed to the background properly. They just didn't know why things weren't working. Um, because they're used to writing stuff from, you know, if you're using Android, uh, generally people are used to their main activity uh, spinning everything up. But in, in the Android world, the fact is, is the activity may never fire uh, when you're in the background. So stuff like that, you needed an application, um, which Shiny generates in the background for you, um, so that all your services are ready to go, regardless of if Xamarin Forms or Prism or any of those other great libraries you have are running. Um, and when it's in the background, again, we support all the dependency injection and, and cross-platform. So it just brings all your services there and makes it easier uh, instead of harder to get all these things working. Um, you also, when, when you were using plugins, uh, the thing I found as a plugin author, you always needed a different, like additional infrastructure. So um, in terms of a geofence plugin, um, you would need to store the geofence for the user on Android to say, this is, you know, these are the coordinates I want to watch. This is the distance. Um, and, and Android doesn't, doesn't persist that. So you needed to bring stuff like a file storage or um, some sort of alert service. Then you needed permissions. Um, so it just, it got heavy. And you, you started with just this simple library that needed all these other things. So Shiny had to bring all of that, um, much like Xamarin Essentials. It, it, it had to have all of that out of the box, so it was just there. And as I started writing modules for Shiny, you know, I just had all the stuff. I didn't have to worry about it. 
Um, there is a lot of uh, carryover between Essentials, uh, Xamarin Essentials, if you're using it, and Shiny. Um, but Essentials doesn't lend itself to testability uh, for a lot of us old school enterprise devs. Um, we want to do unit testing. We want to have dependency injection. And we want to have these modules be overridable for, for stuff like this. Um, so Essentials is great, gets you going, uh, has all those great front end services. It just doesn't cover a lot of these background stuff uh, that we're going to be talking about today. Um, the APIs for things like push and BLE uh, were always complex or, or junk. Um, if you've used uh, Bluetooth on Android, you'll know what I'm talking about. Bluetooth on Android is just, it's a bit of chaos uh, if you've used it between threading and and if you've if you've encountered the the legacy GAT one thirty three uh, issue, um, it's just it's it's a headache to deal with. Um, so over the years, as I've developed a Bluetooth plugin, uh, we brought it to Android, and we were able to deal with a lot of those errors. Um, so again, one consistent API works perfectly on iOS and and Android, um, so you don't have to worry about all the little Android intricacies that go on. Um, again, Android being the pain platform for, for backgrounding, uh, if you've ever used it, you've probably had, um, you know, am I using a service? Am I using a broadcast receiver? Am I using some other weird thing that Android's invented today? They tend to change the how that's going to work with every major release. Um, broadcast receivers is held strong for a couple releases now. Uh, who knows what's coming in, in 12 yet, but we'll see. Um, anyhow, the point is with... With Shiny, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, as Android changes, Shiny catches up uh, to those changes and a new release and you're just off and running uh, with nothing more than a new Git update. Um, so I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna show this in a few minutes, what Shiny, what Shiny has and how to wire it up. Uh, it has a startup file. Um, if you've done ASP.NET Core, you're probably familiar with that. Um, you know, you need these startup files because again, uh, Shiny being so dependency uh, injected driven, it needs to know, you know, what services do you want to use? What services do you want to bring to your background services? So like your database or your HTTP stuff. Um, and it also brings logging in. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to worry about logging off the start. Uh, I just want to kind of spin up an app. The problem is, is in the background, you don't have a lot of the debugging experience. So you need stuff, you need logging, you need um app center you need all those cool things spun up in the background so that when if an error does happen you know god forbid um it's you know you've got the logging there so you can you can know what's going on uh, with your background services um again dependency injection whether you like it or not it's it's here it's coming in maui um and and shiny is all all spread uh, all built on top of dependency injection um, again, to support your testing and, and all of the things you need in the background. Um, another thing I know people are, you know, if you're new to .NET World, uh, you may not know what reactive extensions are. Um, in my opinion, they're a great replacement for .NET events. They don't tend to leak memory the same way, and they're very powerful in what they, they do from an asynchronous operation standpoint. Um, so Shiny is built on Rx, uh, not your traditional uh, .NET event. Uh, and in some cases, we replace tasks with observables. Um, we won't talk about too much about that today because fortunately the stuff we're using uh, doesn't do much Rx. Um, so for the background, um, probably when, you're, when you've written plugins, uh, you've been using stuff like, um, I don't know, what's a great one? Uh, jobs, a jo jobs plugin. Um, it doesn't have, it has basically a .NET event or, or something that you subscribe to and you would put that in your main activity or your um, iOS app delegate. Um, the problem is, is that the, those, those services, you end up with like this big massive app delegate or a big massive main activity. Um, and you, you never knew where to put the event um, to register so that it fired if your app was in the background. So that was a problem. Um, in Shiny, we don't do any of that stuff. You don't need to worry about what's launching when. Uh, we use something called delegate interfaces. Um, if you've used iOS a bit uh, from a native standpoint, you're probably used to the delegates and, and how you put them on uh, the associated services in iOS. So Shiny uses that uh, so that we have a test testable modular unit that supports DI and, and all that nice stuff. And we don't have to worry about um, lifecycle of an application. 
So some of the some of the modules that Shiny has, um, obviously the big one that people are, are used to is the periodic background jobs. Uh, I say periodic because if you've done mobile development, especially on iOS, um, it's not scheduled. It's very intelligent how the OS tends to run these based on, you know, the user's battery or internet availability. Um, it, it very intelligently runs these jobs. So plan for that. Don't don't think that these things are going to run you know, every 15 minutes, like you need them to, they're going to run as the OS decides best fit. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, again, Xamarin Essentials has stuff like G GPS. Uh, it doesn't have geofencing, obviously, because that's a background operation. But in, in Essentials does that fantastic from a from a front, from a foreground or, or UI perspective, but doesn't handle it on the background. Um, so Shiny has some nice packages that do that. Um, it has mo motion activity recognition. So if you wanted to track, say, your users are, how they're moving, are they walking, are they running, uh, as those things are changing, um, you know, the, these are important things to track if you're doing stuff like tracking a drive, for instance. Um, there's some great things Shiny is going to be doing around there in the future. Uh, so if you start driving, you might want to track their GPS and, and see how far they, they drove, say, for business or, or whatever the case may be. Um, Shiny has local notifications. Um, it, it's, it's probably one of the best in biz. It, it handles scheduled uh, notifications, uh, user interactions. So if, for instance, if you want to take a text uh, from the background without ever entering your application, you can do stuff like that. Uh, and you can pretty much customize every part of the notification, especially on Android. It's a very rich notification experience. Um, so it handles all of that. Um, a lot of people go, well, what's, what's local notifications have to do with the background and kind of device-centric services? Um, this is one of the plugins I had years ago. I had a notifications plugin, and I kind of carried it forward because uh, one of the things is as you're working in the background with something like Bluetooth, you may want to let the user know, um, you know, hey, we've connected to this device. I pulled this information. Or, hey, we see you've started a drive. Um, good for you. You know, keep doing those things. Um, so local notifications became one of the big offerings um, because it was always needed in the background. Um, Shiny also has, as of 2.0, um, push notifications. Uh, so my my good friend Dan Siegel of Prism fame, uh, he got really upset when App Center uh, took down their notifications because he had a bunch of clients on it. Uh, and one of the big problems with push notifications is if you've used them, um, you know, some of these providers like App Center and I think Hockey App and, and all those push notification providers tended to come and go over the years. Um, and then the, for those of us who are doing native notifications, you know, things like tagging and all those rich experiences that you may be used to on Azure notification hubs, um, they don't exist on stuff like iOS. So we wanted to introduce a very consistent API um, that if a push notification uh, provider disappeared tomorrow. So if Azure disappeared tomorrow, which I don't think that'll ever happen, um, you know, you could switch out your push notification provider in one line of code. Uh, so that was that was a big cool thing that we're doing now, uh, and we're making the background consistent, very uh, very consistent across platforms uh, with a single API. Uh, and the last set of modules that Chiny does, um, at least that I like to advertise, is uh, Bluetooth and iBeacons. Uh, iBeacons are these little cool things that you can use to track a user, um, like an advertising if they're near them. Uh, you can say, you know, hello, we see you've entered our store, or goodbye, you know, sorry you didn't buy anything, etc. Uh, so they're great for tracking location context. Uh, and then obviously Bluetooth LE. Um, I could spend three of these talks talking about BLE, so we're going to skip by that one today, uh, just because it's such a huge uh, offering. So I will uh, I will get to the code. Uh, I know a lot of people hate the the PowerPoint. It just it's a very easy thing to talk. Uh, so let's open up Visual Studio, and hopefully everybody can see. Uh, you probably can't see the the right hand side, but I will uh, fix that in momentarily. All right. All right. So. With with uh, Xamarin Forms and, and Shiny, you're probably used to having your main activity. Um, obviously, Shiny has to spin quite a few things for stuff like permissions. Uh, if you've used Essentials, you've probably seen, uh, you know, that need to override 
um, your background permission. I can't see. I've used Shiny so much, I can't even remember the name of the method right now. Um, so you, you end up having to wire up all these services. Uh, Shiny also has a, a main application that needs to be injected into Android. And you'll notice that I don't show it over here. Uh, I'm not going to create it, but I'll talk about why in a minute. Uh, same with App Delegate. You'll notice that there's nothing in App Delegate at the moment. Again, we usually have to put like our forms load, our, you know, any of those, if you've used any plugins, you often have to call a knit and stuff here. Um, you'll notice that this is pretty bland uh, or blank at the moment. Um, and I'm going to show something cool uh, that we're doing with Shiny. Um, one of the key problems when I'm doing support for Shiny is generally if there is a bug, it's because somebody's missed one of the massive hooks. Uh, that Shiny needs to work in the background. So with 2.0, uh, what I ended up doing was creating this cool little thing. Uh, it's just an attribute you put on your assembly or the head of your project. So this is on iOS. I've said the startup project is my Shiny startup and my Xamarin Forms app type is app. Um, so you can see them in my shared project up here. I've got this little Shiny startup and I've got my Xamarin app, but nowhere down here have I referenced them. So with .NET 5, uh, Microsoft released kind of this cool little thing called source generators. Um, so this was a cool opportunity to stop doing all of this boilerplate junk and, and hooking it all in. It just comes all out of the box. So, and I can show you what it actually generates. Let's assume, let's go to our analyzers here and we'll take a look at iOS. So we're in our iOS project. You can see it's got an app delegate file here. And here you can see it's generated all of that code um, that it thinks we're going to need. So it's created the Shiny startup. It's created the Xamarin forms in it. It's loaded the application that we had in our, our um, in that attribute. And it's all, it's all wired up. It's all ready to go. Um, it's even included uh, some uh, push notification stuff here uh, because it detected the library. I had it previously installed in here, um, but it's not there anymore but it's generated it for us um, should we need it in the future. And now we'll go over to our main application um, in Android. Again, very sparse, there's nothing here. The only difference is, is we marked our main activity as partial uh, because we're gonna wire in these methods obviously. Um, and then we've got our same attribute here uh, to tell Shiny generate some code in this, this library. And we'll take a look at what is generated over here. So we'll go into our Shiny generators so here's what it's done to our main activity behind the scenes. It's got and wired in. See, there's uh, on per, on request permission result. That was the one I was forgetting. Um, and it's wired in um, the shiny version of it. And it's also seen that Essentials is installed because Essentials is installed in our list of packages here. So it's gone ahead and wired that through as well. Um, it looks for a lot of these popular open source libraries and, and generates that code for you. Uh, there's a complete list online in the shiny documentation of what I attempt to generate for you. Um, so definitely take a look. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Um, you know, it, it just makes it easy so we don't have to re remember all this stuff because I forget all the time. I, I find I'm getting old. I can't remember the name of all these methods across OSs. Um, so it's helpful. Uh, and then obviously I said, uh, Shiny needs a main application. I've gone and wired that through as well. So this is generated entirely for you. Uh, there's nothing you really need to do. Um, and this this will make all the magic happen. So that's all of our boilerplate in a very quick uh, manner. Now I'm gonna go to the main part. So this is our, our Shiny startup file. This is where we configure all of our services, our jobs, et cetera, uh, to, work with, um, to work in the background. Uh, you wouldn't register your foreground services here. This is all stuff that Shiny is gonna use. Um, there are ways to configure the services to work with stuff like Prism in the foreground, but that's for another talk. Um, but it integrates and plays nicely with um, all of these MVVM libraries. Um, so don't worry too much about that. But today we're going to talk about uh, just creating a simple job, uh, a background job in Shiny. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a job. So let's just call it my job. There we go. And we are going to implement a nice little interface called iJob. Now, I'm not going to have this thing do much yet. Um, I'm going to wire this in. 
So I'm going to tell Shiny, I, I, I want to use, uh, I want to register a job. And the name of that job is, let's do type of, type of my job. Again, it's early here. Excuse my typing. Um, and we're going to come back to this in just one second. So that will wire up our job. Um, again, if we had any dependencies here, we would register them in in our startup file, and they would be all available to this job. So if you had I my cool HTTP, uh, you could inject that here if it was registered with Shiny. Um, for the purpose of this demo, though, I'm actually going to use something from Shiny, the local notifications. Uh, do I have it installed? There we go. So this is the NuGet package. So I've already got it registered. So I'm going to tell Shiny to use notifications, which means now, uh, if I go back to my job, I can register this little guy here. And there we go. And we're going to put him up here because we want to use it when the job runs. So we'll turn this into async. So this is basically the only method you need to be prepared for. Um, there's lots of stuff you can get about the job info. And you only have about uh, 30 to 45 seconds, depending on your platform, to, to work in the background. So there is a cancellation token uh, there. Don't do things like running timers or, or anything that needs to maintain state because, again, in 30 seconds, it's going to crush your app uh, and background it completely. Because um, obviously, we don't want to be chewing up the user's batteries, running loops or anything uh, cool in the background indefinitely. So iOS is very careful. If, if you're constantly doing stuff back here that you shouldn't be, uh, they'll start running you less. So, so be careful of that. And do watch a cancellation token. Uh, when this fires, do try and clean up, do try and be a good citizen. Um, again, because the OS is watching you and if you start misbehaving, it, it, it'll start ignoring you. So from this job, we're just gonna do something stupid like, hi, uh, I wouldn't do this to my users normally because this could fire every you know couple minutes on iOS. Um, so you might drive them nuts. Firing from a background job. And there we go. So um, we have registered a job. Let's go ahead and run that. Hopefully Visual, Visual Studio cooperates. I did an update yesterday. It's always dangerous to do this before a presentation. Now I've wired this through to run these just kind of from the foreground, um, just because it, there's a whole bunch of things you got to do to test these in the background. Uh, iOS is far easier to test uh, jobs from a background perspective um, because in Visual Studio it gives you a nice little button. Uh, that's on the Visual Studio for Mac side. Um, so I won't show that today uh, because I didn't have time to set that part of the demo up. Um, but what I tell people is if it works, um, if it works here, it's going to work in the background. Um, this is pretty well tested, uh, and the community would be uh, crying murder and throwing pitchforks at me uh, if it wasn't. So take my word at it from this demo that it does work. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And there is a notification up here um, that we fired. I've been running this earlier. Um, but as you can see, it's run uh, the test successfully. And how I called this from um, the application side or from the foreground we've got just this little button clicked up please use mvbm this is such a gross way of doing it but um i basically told shiny jobs and you'll notice how this is not dependency injected I'll, I'll talk about that in a second um i've run all and i've said basically go through all the libraries you've got uh and and do your thing um and, and it basically goes through and runs all these cool services uh, in the background so that we're all set up to go um what did I want to talk about here? Okay, so here you can see I'm using what's called a, a resource locator a pattern, um, just because we haven't got dependency injection or something like Prism here uh, to make it easily available. Uh, Shiny has this cool thing called Shiny Host. It's a it's a very big thing that it needs to to run. Um, so here I've done resolve 
our job manager to, to run them dynamically in the foreground. Um, but I also have the shiny jobs up here. Um, and I'm going to show what that is uh, because again, a lot of people don't like this dependency injection stuff. It is unfortunate because it's there for a good reason. Um, but I'll show you how we can get kind of these cool statics. So we don't need to, if you don't like dependency injection, uh, this will make your life a little cleaner, a bit cleaner. Um, but the call between this guy and this guy is pretty much identical. So if you are one of those people that doesn't like um, kind of the static or the, the, the dependency injection world, uh, maybe you don't have a nice framework like Prism or, or something in the foreground uh, that works with your Xamarin Forms apps. Uh, Shiny has also with this source generation uh, offering, it has this thing, this little assembly that you put, or this little attribute you put on the assembly uh, called generate static classes. Um, so you give it a namespace and it will generate all of this magic for you. So let me pull that up. So you can see it's detected that Shiny Jobs is installed. It's found some various other things that it knows are there as well and generated them as static classes. Uh, here's our notifications. Um, so what Shiny does is it goes through and it detects what you've uh, installed in terms of NuGet, um, in terms of the Shiny offering, and it goes through and generates these classes. Now, a lot of people ask, well, why generate these? Why not put it just with a platform? Um, the problem is, is that in order to keep these statics very relevant, um, is that they're, because the interfaces do tend to change in Shiny over time, um, these these didn't necessarily, the static classes ne didn't necessarily keep up. And it caused me a lot of grief because people would be like, hey, the static isn't updated. And I didn't want to support these. Um, I'm a big fan of dependency injection. Uh, so what I decided to do was code gen these for you. Um, and then it was basically always the latest version of Shiny um, that you had installed because it knew what methods it had to create. So again, it's there. You don't have to use it. It's just kind of one of those bonus features that keeps us all sane. And with that, so I have my job. We've shown it firing. Uh, let me go back. So uh, that's Shiny just in a pinch. We took a quick look at our job and, and how to wire these things in kind of some of the cool things it's doing around source generation. Um, 3.0 is on roadmap. Uh, I'll have some links to GitHub at the end of this um, where you can take a look at stuff like uh, what Shiny's got planned. So 3.0 is, is, is hit the, the roadmap. It's got uh, targets for WinUI. Uh, that's the new up and coming uh, cool Windows integration. Uh, WebAssembly, that's gonna be some cool stuff. Um, you know, I'd like to share my code for how I do Bluetooth, uh, a, cro a crossover to a Blazor app or even Uno, uh, stuff I'm looking into. And obviously, uh, uh, Maui is coming. Thank goodness it was delayed, but you know, it, it's, it's going to get some rich feature offering. Um, Shiny will integrate with Maui, but it's, it's not dependent on Maui, uh, just like it's not dependent on Xamarin Forms. Um, but it'll make it really easy to integrate in the Maui world. Uh, so you don't need a Shiny startup the same way. Um, it'll just work within the Maui context. Uh, and all the Maui stuff that they're doing is great because it makes Shiny really easy to integrate with it. Um, some of the other cool things that Shiny's coming, uh, I alluded to this earlier, was stuff like the trip tracker. Um, it's a nice little API that's going to mix together some of the, the GPS, the motion activity to track your runs, your drives. When you start, you stop. Uh, it's it's going to be really cool. Um, that's an offering that's coming soon. Um, geo dispatching. This is another cool one. If, if, if you're running line of business apps, um, you don't want to be sending your GPS coordinates constantly to your background services. Uh, those that have implemented GPS know that that's a lot of data coming in all the time. Uh, if you've got employees in the field that you want to respond to alerts, um, generally because all these coordinates are coming in, you're having to store them in a database and then you're having to query the database to see where they are. Geo dispatching is going to be a cool mechanism where uh, you broadcast the coordinates of where an event has occurred. And if you're within that distance, kind of like a broadcasted geofence into your users uh, through a push notification. And then what happens is the, the, it'll go, am I with it? Me as the user, am I within that GPS coordinate? Yes, I am. Send a local notification to the user to say, hey, this event has occurred. Do you accept or reject? Um, this is something that I'm putting into place for an ambulance service. Uh, so I think that'll be pretty cool for the community in general um, to use. It'll be very powerful mechanism, uh, certainly. Um, and BLE, 
uh, my BLE uh, career kind of started with working with the car computers or OBD. Um, OBD is a very, very big uh, chattery protocol. Um, and it's very hard to hook up, surprisingly, uh, even if you've got a nice BLE mechanism. Uh, there was a lot of work that had to go in. So I still do this as a hobby. I still like to break into my car and do some funky things with it. Um, so I've got a nice little library coming to deal with stuff like what, how fast is my car going, uh, how far it's gone, etc. cetera. Um, that'll be a cool little offering uh, that's coming out soon. And with that, uh, here's some links uh, to take a look at for Shiny. Uh, my blog's there, my Twitter uh, and GitHub. Feel free to reach out to me if you've got any questions. Um, thanks for watching.